Hello, Mighty Joe here. Today is going to be probably the most important topic I think I've ever covered on video. And it's going to be the first time ever I get a little geeky on you as far as anatomy is concerned. But this subject's so important that I thought I'd do a video on it instead of just doing an article, a written article on my blog. And what that is, is the neural aspect of strength training, particularly grip training. Because, let me tell you, these guys now are getting at such a high level, it's just unbelievable where they're going now with uh, grippers and thick bar and pinch. It's just incredible how strong they're getting. But here's the problem. They're getting stuck. And they think they're only getting so strong, they're, they start making backwards progression, and they, they don't know what to do, and they keep doing the same old thing. They're... they're doing resistance training and they're adding resistance, adding resistance. They're doing it in small increments, but at some point they get stuck and all the progress stops. Well, it's my studied opinion, because I'm, I'm kind of a study freak and I, I love to do my own little research project, but I'm of the opinion that the part that's being neglected and you hardly ever hear any about is the neural aspect, the nervous system. So what I want to do I want to cover the science of it real quick, and then I want to show you how, if, if, you'll do, if you'll follow what I'm saying and give it a try, you'll be amazed at the progress you'll make very, very quick. And this video is intended for anybody in grip, but specifically to the elite guys that are closing like the three and a half, Captain Crush, uh, the guys on the MASH Monster board of the grip board, uh, these guys that are shutting the uh, MASH Monster 4 on up to the 7, uh, it's for them. But it's for anybody because a beginner has to start somewhere and eventually they'll move up and they'll get stuck. Well, that's what this video is about. We're going, I'm going to discuss the neural aspect of grip training. So we'll begin by starting with a little bit of anatomy. And what I did is I took a wooden dowel and I taped a piece of rope to it. And what this represents is the spinal cord. You hear all this talk about the CNS, 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 motor unit recruitment. What does all that mean? Okay, the CNS means central nervous system. Okay, it consists of the spinal cord and the brain. Just imagine the brain up here. And what I've done here, the reason I use the rope is... I want it to represent how the nerves branch off into each arm and go down to the hands, okay? So, one way, or one of the main ways people in, in any type of athletic that involves strength, especially weightlifting, is you hear all the talk about motor unit recruitment, okay? Well, what that is, is when a muscle has pretty much reached its uh, motor unit threshold, more motor units are called upon to kick in and there's more force produced. A motor unit is simply a, a motor neuron and all the fibers, it, the muscle fibers it innervates. Okay? So the, the problem is with your hands your wrist, your forearm, you don't have the large muscle groups for motor unit recruitment like you do in the lower extremities like your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes. That's where the majority of motor unit recruitment takes place. Well, with your hands, it's a different story because the, the motor units are smaller, the muscle fibers are smaller, and you have uh, you have large motor neurons and you have small motor neurons. All these motor neurons are right here in the, the ventricle horn of your, your spinal cord. Ventricle meaning the front of it. Okay, what happens is, let's say this is your right arm and your left arm. These motor neurons innervate your right arm. The motor neurons here innervate your left arm and then they branch off, and they're in bundles. There's small bundles and there's big bundles, okay? Well, 
The problem with your hands being the muscles are so small, there is no motor unit recruitment. You can't increase it because it's maxed out as it is because of the, the, the size of the muscle fibers. But what there is, there are several ways to increase force. Force is mass times acceleration. Well, let's change that for the purposes of what we're talking about, grip strength, because more familiar terms would be resistance and speed, velocity, okay? So another way to increase the output is what they call rate coding. It's a rate of force development. In a lot of anatomy textbooks, it's called ROFD, rate of force development. And there's several ways to increase that. And one way to increase that, this uh, rate coding, is with what I would call ballistic training. Not necessarily speed training, but ballistic training where it's explosive. Not like speed, if you're working on your speed, it would be like how many times you can do something real fast. But ballistic training or velocity would be a rep that's just a all out everything you got. Not this, which is speed, but you're wanting this, explosiveness. And it, it like 40 to 60% of your one rep max. Okay. Well, rate coding, what happens is, is being that the motor unit recruitment is out of the, the question, you speed up the frequency at which these motor neurons fire. And the faster they fire, the rate coding's large, the more force that'll be outputted into your hands or in whatever muscles in question. So the way I just showed you with a gripper is one way. Uh, you can also do it with a grip machine. You can set the grip machine up to where the range of motion is where you're particularly weak at or you're stuck at and do these explosive movements. I mean with everything you got because things falling. There is, there was a, uh, I was reading a book from Gray Cook and him and Brent Jones was talking about how many motor neurons was just in the hands that was dedicated to the hands. And it was as, it was more than all the motor neurons that for the leg and the upper arm and the, the shoulder all put together that's in the hand. There's more in the hand than all them put together on the, on the same side. I mean, that's a lot. But the problem is they're small. So you, you can't get more motor unit recruitment, so you have to go to rate coding. You have to increase the frequency of how fast they're being activated. And that's how you do it. You have to speed or velocity, explosiveness, ballistic type training has to enter into the equation. And I apologize if I'm if I'm confusing here, but there's a there's so much to cover it kind of makes my my mind race. But and I don't really want to skip anything, but it's so important I wanted to do the best I could to explain it the best I can. So let's kind of sum up what I said. Here's your uh, spinal cord. Here's the brain up here. These are the nerves that branch off at the cervical. There's I think it's C6, C7, and C8. That's the uh, cervical disc they branch off from that feeds your arms, your wrist, your hands, your fingers. And then I think T1, your thoracic, the first thoracic vertebrae, I think it feeds like the ulnar nerve, innervates it, and all your little, all the flexor muscles. So, and in, inside the front part of the uh, ventral horn of your uh, spinal cord, is these motor neurons and your central your brain there's also sensory neurons and they're in your skin your joints your ligaments tendons and based on that feedback your brain gets it knows how many motor neurons to fire but what we're after is getting them to fire more frequent if that if that makes any sense instead of them firing let's say a hundred times a second you want them to fire 300 times a second, which will produce more force. So 
And there's other ways to get more output, like uh, motor unit synchronization, doublet firing. And I think there's one other I forgot, but, but this one right here, this rate coding, getting the frequency of the activation sped up through explosive ballistic type training. I'm telling you, I've experimented with myself, with my son, with some people online, and the results are staggering. I'm talking like two or three days and they've jumped up three pounds in a, in a gripper rating. And that's huge, where usually it takes months. So what I want you to try, let me get this out of the way, so much for the explanation. I hope that wasn't confusing, but I, I did the best I could. But just take a gripper, and I'm gonna do another video on a grip machine on some ballistic type training. And then I'm gonna do what they call ballistic, ballistic isometric contractions. I'm going to show you how to do it with bands, and you'll work individual fingers, finger flexion with, with bands, but you're going to work your fingers independently. I'll get, all, I'll get into all that in another video. But for now, just take a gripper, like this is a, a trainer, take a gripper that's 40 to 60% of your max. If you've never tried this, keep it at 40-50%. And... And the peak cycle of your gripper training is probably the best time to do this. And it's real easy. You just three, four, five sets of five or six singles, but you got to give it, start it parallel and just give it everything you got. That's one. Reset it. That's two. I mean, it's got to be an all out just explosion into that gripper. And let me tell you, you're going to be thinking, well, golly, where's all the volume? Where's the negatives? How, how's this go help? Well, you mark my words, you give it a try and get back with me because everybody's leaving the speed, the velocity out of the equation. But see if it don't increase that rate coding like I was trying to explain the best I could and see what it does for you. My next video, I'll go into the grip machine and particularly where you get stuck on grippers. If you don't have a grip machine, I'll show you another way. But one thing I'm real fascinated with and excited about is the experiments I've been doing with uh, isolated finger training with uh, bands. And uh, that, by the way, that's another way, ballistic isometric training is another way to raise the uh, rate of force development, get it up higher, the, the rate coding. And I think you'll find that pretty neat. So I hope I didn't confuse you. Uh, I hope this helps. Give it a try. Don't, don't neglect it, I'm telling you. Uh, you guys that are really lead on these grippers, I'm telling you, it'll get you past your sticking point, along with what I'm going to show you in a couple of more videos. Hope this helps. Hope you liked it. Thank you.